winning shows go. Um, have you ever like blown out your voice just oh, like yes. doing loopy lines? Absolutely. Like, oh my god, I can hardly <laughs> I can only do three hours of loopy at a time, four okay. if it's not a fighting show episode. But uh, yeah, Luffy, Luffy's painful. Luffy has lowered my voice from when I first started. I, I had somebody earlier today, might be in here, uh, who asked me to do the ta-da from uh, Kitty Grade. Are you in here? <laughs> well, and I, uh, I, I don't have that voice anymore. Oh no! <laughs> Eclair is a little too high for me now. The closest I've come is Toa in, uh, I want to say Dragon Age, but it's not. Um, Toa in... <laughs> What's what's so in Dragon Age? Dragon Age? No, Dragon Age. I don't know. <laughs> Dragon Age is the only thing I can think of. I'm so excited about it. Thank you. <laughs> Dragon Age. Yeah. So that's as high as I can go. will pick it up. There were there was rumors for a while and then it kind of sank back down into not happening and I just hope someday Sunvision does pick it up and I get to play something. <laughs> yeah. Um what is your favorite type of anime? Like this kind of stuff that you like to watch and Okay, see so that's a different question. The kind of stuff I like to be in or the kind of stuff that I like to the watch. The kind of stuff that you like to watch. That you like are interested in like you know, watching Okay, the ones that I like to watch are the funny ones. Like, I like to watch Sergeant Frog or Shin Chan or Kodacha. Uh, I like those. Those are those are the most fun to watch. The ones that I like to be in are the more dramatic, subtle, the ones where it feels like I'm really acting. <laughs> Long time. 
time ago, I would have gone around with an accent just to see if people would buy it. Uh, but I don't do it so much anymore, I guess because I get it all out in the booth. <laughs> I get to do it all the time. But um, the closest I've come to that was watching Chris Sabat do that. Uh, when we were in Vegas, Chris Sabat and Laura Bailey and I were uh, gambling. Very bad, don't do it. Uh, <laughs> we were at the craps table and he started pretending that he was from Poland, oh. <laughs> and he was the director of very famous movies over in Poland, and we were two dancers from Texas that he picked up, uh, and so it was a lot of fun pretending he didn't speak very much English, and that we were saying, um, I really, oh, do you have any more money? Because I could really use a little bit more, just ten, it's the one with the two zeros. <laughs> Love them. He would love 
them because they have bells in their beards and he thinks anything that's weird is awesome. Uh, I also imagine that the Scottish terrorists were really well fed. I imagine them as large, burly men with lots of like turkey legs and stuff. So I think that he would totally get along with them. But you know, until they terrorize the villagers, then you have to say that for the villagers and it might get messy. Growing up, did you idolize any anime characters at all? You know, I had never heard of anime until I started working in anime. Until I met Laura Bailey, I had never heard of anime. And now I think it's fantastic. I don't know where it was when I was a kid. Uh, I, I wasn't allowed to watch uh, more than half an hour of TV a day. So I, I wasn't exposed to anything. People talk nowadays about shows that they watched when they were kids that I'm supposed to know. And I have no idea what they're talking about. I never watched TV, and now I watch a lot of it. Um, I I love Shiro. I idolize Shira. <laughs> That's not anime, but it's animation. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. Uh, I blanked for half a second there. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> just, I'm kind of curious. Everyone has them. Do you have that funny con story or that moment, maybe a crazy fan that you'd just like to share with us, or any of the <laughs> I'm sure hundreds of cons you've probably now been to. Um, I mean, there are a few. Uh, cons can get pretty crazy. I've had people sleep outside my door. What? Which is Whoa. so not okay, by the way. <laughs> no, take it. Um, I've had guys taking pictures with me try to grab a little something. Oh. And get kicked out of the con. Um, I've signed a vintage Mustang car. Oh. Wow. Uh, which was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Although I felt like I was ruining it the whole time. I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I've uh, been proposed to. Uh, I, you know what? One of my favorite things about <laughs> a convention experience, and this isn't probably interesting to you at all, but to me it is, uh, I met a baby named Angel June um, a, when she was just first born her parents brought her, and they've been bringing her to at least one convention I've gone to a year for the last five years. Aww. So I've seen her grow up. She's five years old now, and I got to see her every year, and we've got a picture together every year, and that is pretty awesome. Aww. <laughs> oh, good, you didn't think that was tough. <laughs> you guys did, though, didn't you? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I, 
it's a good thing that Freda didn't immediately leave and never talk to one of us again. <laughs> and we've been friends ever since. <laughs> Drugs are bad, but powdered sugar is funny. <laughs> Instead of uh, this person says this, this person says this, and this person says this, 
it's just a grid. It's like a table with all of your lines in it. And so when you get to the fighting lines, it'll be defeat and then your line. And that's what happens when she gets defeated. And then it'll have defeat and your next line. And there'll be variations on each other. And you just go through and read all of them. And so it's not terribly repetitive because it all happens so quickly. Usually you record video games in like two or three hours in Texas. They're just not as involved as the ones in uh, LA. So it doesn't get too repetitive. Uh, in fact, an anime is probably a little bit more repetitive than that. Um, how did you get into voice acting? Laura Bailey. Uh, oh. Laura was my best friend. We had done a play together and when I moved back from uh, college to Texas. Mm -hmm. We did a play together, and she told me what she did, and it was really awesome. And so she pulled me up to Funimation to watch her record, oh. which was actually her way of trying to get me in the door. Oh, nice. uh, and so she had me come up and watch uh, a session with her and Chris Bevins. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was doing Dragon Ball GT. Oh. And while I was there, he asked me if I wanted to get to the booth and scream. And so I got in the booth and I screamed. <laughs> and uh, that scream got me the audition for Case Closed, and uh, that audition, before I ever got cast as Rachel, got me the part of Claire in Kitty Grape. Oh, so it was all, all thanks to Laura. My whole <laughs> career is thanks to Laura Bailey. Yay. <laughs> yes? Um, this is more pertaining towards video games. Um, if given the opportunity not only to, to do a voice for a character, but also to do the motion capture, would you be totally open to that? Oh my gosh, yeah, I think that'd be totally fun. It's just not something we do in Texas very often. The big video games, the ones that cost a lot of money, are done in LA. And someday I'd love to go to LA and do one, but they're all union, so. Uh, but yeah, that would be fantastic. Sure. I thought we were away, but whatever. Yes? you or anybody else been Texas? No, no, no snakes in, uh, not really, I, I don't ever think I've ever seen a snake in the wild. I've seen, huh? I've seen lots of snake in the wild. <laughs> um, no, I've never, I, I've seen like little garden snakes, but um, I do, I know that people run across rattlers every now and again. Yes? What has been the best uh, improv you have done or you've heard? as you've been uh, acting as a voice actor, just... The best improv? Yeah, either you've done or heard from somebody else. That's hard. Um, Mike McFarlane's really good at that. He's good at coming up with things on the fly. Um, and so is Chris Kaysen. So <laughs> some of their outtakes are really funny. I'm trying to think if there was... Everything is so scripted. We really rarely have a time when you get to just make something up. And usually when you are making something up, it's voila, which just means in the background, it's just a background shatter and you'll never hear it. Um, recently, Mike had me record an outtake for Luffy. That was the most fun outtake I thought we'd ever done. And I even wrote it down. I was like, I'm gonna remember this one. You guys always ask for outtakes, and I'm like, I don't remember any of them. Uh, he's, he's walking through the jungle, and he's like, hey, I think, I think we're almost out of the jungle. And instead, Mike had me say, <laughs> um, what was it? Uh, you, oh, crud, I forgot the first one. <laughs> I wrote it down, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. I should know it because it's a quote, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. You know where you are? You're in the jungle, baby. <laughs> of wall 
there's the wall where everybody's like, ah, we don't really care, let's just have fun and joke around, and people will watch what's going on on the screen and be like, oh, I'm wearing a red shirt, I'm going into the cafe, I'm, and that's what they're doing for Walla, and I take Walla seriously, like, I, <laughs> if, I, if I'm directing a show and I have people in for Walla, I want them to be in character. If they're going into the market, they're talking about things they would talk about when they go into the market. Uh, so, yeah, no, I, I definitely don't do that. What part of Texas? I mean, I'm trying to do the rest of it. Thank you, Diane. DFW? Dallas Forward? Yeah. Flower Mound is where Funimation is. You boys should be Romano for Natalia. Right? Okay. Yay! What is your favorite part of like being TV Romano? Like, um, I love it when he's imitating. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> oh, I like the. This sounds cool. Oh my God! <laughs> I loved what a brat he was. He was such a brat. He is. Yeah. He's so adorable. So adorable. You know? Like I just want to take him home. And I was really glad Jamie Market was directing that. She's hilarious, and uh -huh. so she was good about keeping the funny stuff and asking me to do things. I'd be like, oh yeah, that's way funnier. <laughs> <laughs> Case closed or no? I doubt it. 
I, you know, I would love to, but nobody bought it. It just didn't have a market here. Uh, it's too kiddy for kids, for, for adults, but it's too adult to show to kids. And uh, that's just, that's, that's a, a bisection that happens in Japan and doesn't happen here. So nobody was buying it. It's the same thing with Kodacha. It just didn't have a market. And I would love to finish it. I'd love to, but I don't. If they offer it to me, I'll do it. <laughs> yes? Um, do you have a favorite um, Yuko line? Favorite Yuko line? I mean, I like her standard. I like the. Um, There's no such thing as coincidence. There is only inevitable. That's probably my favorite. She does it all the time. Oh, wait, no. You know, um, the, when she's wearing the little cat ear, uh, the, the little radio headphone things <laughs> with Watanuki, and they're talking back and forth, and uh, he says, but why the, why the cat ears? And she says, because they're funny. <laughs> <laughs> Hold your hand on it for a few seconds. The fingertip? I use my whole hand. Hold it at your waist? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, that is very specific. Why do they give you a soda where you have to be that specific? Sure, 
I mean, the dark and black is over, so that couldn't happen. But uh, I would, I'll play whatever anybody wants me to play. <laughs> um, were you also surprised how, how it turned out with Shiaki? I was sad. I was sad that she was such a good character, and she was so big in the first two episodes, and then it's just gone. And that kind of sucked. I really liked her. Anybody else? would you give to anyone who wants to become an actress or actor? Um, the, there are two main things. First of all, you have to live where the action is. So uh, if you want to be, if you really want to be a voice actor in anime, which by the way is not a valid career path. <laughs> I mean, it's just so hard to get into and it doesn't pay the bills just voice acting, that you can't pay the bills just doing that. Uh, but if you really want to do that, you would need to be in Dallas. Uh, if you want to be an actor, if you want to be a voice actor or an actor in TV or anything like that, go to LA. There's plenty of it out there. Um, and the other thing I would say is that you have to be an actor to be a voice actor. Some people think that because they can do a facsimile of a voice that they've heard in a show, that they could be a voice actor, but we already have that character. Uh, and so the only way that you get to be a voice actor is if you come up with a voice, if you have something new in yourself that somebody wants to use. So I would say I would say act as much as you can. Be in local theater, uh, try out for student films in colleges, that kind of thing. Uh, just get, get involved and, and take acting wherever you can get it rather than saying, I just want to be an anime voice actor. Uh, you want to be an actor. That's, that's a good one. So typically when you start a new anime, how familiar are you with it when you start? Uh, not familiar at all, typically, unless I'm directing it. If I'm directing it, I've seen the whole thing. Um, as an actor, I, you just don't have time to watch every show that you're doing. <coughs> it's not possible. 
and uh, you just have to trust your director. But I will say that before we record anything, we watch the scene in Japanese. So you have at least seen the scene once in Japanese as an actor all the time, every time. Is there any new enemy that's only been released to Japan so far that you think Bucky will be interested in picking up this movie? I don't know much about acquisitions. Uh, I, don't, I don't find out what we're getting until we, we've got it, actually. Um, I know that there are some shows that have come over recently that I'm really excited about, but uh, I don't know of any that we haven't acquired that I want to acquire. Except so. <laughs> well, may I recommend Hanasaku Iroha? I have absolutely nothing to do with it, so you can recommend it all you want. <laughs> I recommend it Chris Mason. Oh, yeah? Fine. It has nothing to do with it either. Yes. Um, do you know anything more about Kenichi? Uh, like, would we be doing a third season, you mean? Yes. I think it will depend on if it sells. You just have to like buy a lot of copies. I will buy 17 copies. That would be helpful. <laughs> Over 9,000 copies. <laughs> the more people who buy a series, the more likely it is we'll get the second season. Well, Which is why we get second seasons of uh, Italia, but not a second season Woo. of Holly. Oh, <laughs> yes, it's very sad. And it also depends, I mean, that's a good example. It depends on how expensive something Uh, sure. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> um, when he's younger, this is kind of what he sounds like. <laughs> when he's still a pansy. <laughs> <laughs> but then later on, he gets testicles and he sounds like this. <laughs>
Um, speaking of fan mail, do you actually receive all of the fan mail sent to you? Absolutely. If you send it to Funimation and it goes to the right address, like you say Building 1 and everything that you're supposed to, then we absolutely get it. And if you send things like cards or whatever that you want to have signed and you have a self-addressed stamp envelope included, we'll send it back. So that is a way to get that. You can also go to my Facebook page, or you can go to my fan page, or my fan club, which is on the floor. Yes? What's the craziest thing a fan has ever said or sent to you, or <laughs> in general, anything? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, on my MySpace page, um, there was this little, this is a long time ago, this is my face, oh my god. Um, <laughs> What? Oh. And I was that I, it's inappropriate coming from anybody, but I that's of the age where I was like, I don't even know how to respond to this. Because if you were like an older guy, I would be like, that's not appropriate. Don't send things like this. But you're a little girl and I just want to be like You don't you know don't that for sure. I don't know that. I don't know that. But from all of the emails, it was it had a very twelve year old girl flavor. It wasn't just the avatar that did it. It was like, okay, you care about things like OMG and like you talk about your classes and stuff like that. So, but yeah, it was uh, it was awkward. It was a little awkward. Didn't know how to respond. Didn't want to hurt her feelings, but no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, like in Italia, if you could have voiced anyone in the world, like. Well, world, literally, because it's <laughs> nation. Like, even like Neo Talia, if Iggy were to spr sprinkle magical fairy dust over everything and have that be actual, um, would you want to voice anyone from like the. I haven't seen the series. I, I've only seen what I, what I voiced of it. That's one of those things because I work in anime all day long, every day. I see what I do, like what I direct, and I don't have time to watch other anime. So anything that comes along that I'm not directing, I guarantee I haven't seen it. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know the other characters. I played uh, Monaco, the little cat. Oh. I played that for one line, and I thought that was a lot of fun, and I would like it if it was longer. <laughs> I love doing accents, so anybody with an accent. So the Evangelion series, have you ever seen the end of Evangelion? No. Good. For the sake of your character, don't. All right. <laughs> yes. With watching so much animation, uh, Japanese animation, right in the Japanese, have you picked up a lot of it? We pick up little bits here and there. Like, I mean, you'll hear it around the halls, too. We'll be saying, honey? And uh, there, are, there are things like that that we, that we pick up. Uh, Eat the back of us. There are things oh. that you just know. And then from meeting the Japanese uh, voice actors at some of the larger cons, uh, I know polite phrases. I know things that I'm supposed to say, um, but I don't. I certainly don't speak Japanese by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> and I still have a translator come in, uh, someone who speaks Japanese fluently, come in when we're doing a show, and the, the names are a little hard to pronounce, so that she can tell us how to pronounce them correctly. Yeah. Um, when you're doing voice acting, um, are you typically just sticking to one role, or are you doing multiple roles for different? Um, you mean like do I do one role at a time or are, am I more, more shows? Yeah. yeah, there's usually about six shows going at one time and so there's definitely multiple roles going. Can you say something as Chibi Mano? <laughs> Chibi Mano, do you have something specific? Anything really. Um, I said the best on Nikola thing. <laughs> if, you can, if you can give me a line, I will say the line. Call Spain stupid. <laughs> oh, Spain, you are so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Except that's in his Spain voice. That's him imitating Spain. <laughs> yeah. Any uh, fans of joining Twitter? It's like a lot of the other voice actors are. Oh, I should, shouldn't I? <laughs> I'm the last to do everything. I. Uh, I had to switch to Facebook from MySpace for a long time because you have to start up the whole thing all over again. I wish everybody would just pick one and stay there. Uh, but I know 
Twitter is getting more popular and people are actually doing it now and not just stupid people. So I guess I'll probably get one eventually. It's, it, Facebook takes up a lot of time to maintain that and I have two pages because I have my main page and I have my fan page. So that's two pages to maintain and I, and the thought of adding another one is exhausting. <laughs> but probably eventually. I've heard about this, but I can't exactly put my finger on it now. Do you have a role in fairy tale? Uh huh. I play Urza in fairy tale. Why am I not surprised? I don't know. What's that? What's that in Urza? Urza. So, in case clothes, do you know why they changed them? Actually, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, they changed them at the Japanese producer's request. Uh, when when it came over from Japan, the hope was that it was going to be more mass marketed. It was going to be on Cartoon Network, and they were hoping it was going to be big like it is in Japan. Uh, they're always looking for the next DBZ to be part of the business. And uh, so they Americanized it as much as possible. They wanted it to be accessible to as many people as possible. But it certainly wasn't Funimation just screwing with things. The Japanese requested that they make it as Americanized as they could. Um, and I think that if it were, were to come back, if we were ever to do the next se section of it, which I doubt we will, but if we were, they would make it straight to DVD, they would make it for the fans, they would probably change the names back. I, I feel like that would be what they would do. Funimation's learned over the years when to market something to fans and when not to. They're getting better at it. And uh, they try to keep, if it's for the fans and they know that it doesn't have a prayer of getting mass marketed, then they're really good about keeping the names and the places and everything that in place as they should. So we're getting a lot better about that. We don't paint cigarettes into lollipops. <laughs> <laughs>